Greetings, this is Tim. Welcome back. This week I have the most boring collection of benches to share with you. I printed eight new benches this week because I got eight different boxes of PLA. They're all 1.75 millimeter, they're all white, and they are one kilogram rolls. I wanted to be able to compare the brands and to see which one prints best. So you've seen this sample card from when I worked on the TPU. This week we're printing any cubic, overture in gloss, overture in matte, Sun Lu, and you can see how poorly that printed, inland. Tech Bears, Polymaker, and my favorite, Hatchbox. So for each of these, I printed a basic Benchy, and I'm going to switch to the desk to show you. To get this side-by-side -side comparison started, we're going to look at the original Hatchbox print on the left and the new hatch box on the right. Ideally these are two different batches of filament so I wanted to make sure they were printed similar and they are printed similar a lot of the same issues along the layering heights at similar levels but I did note that the bottom printed much better on the newer material. I think that is an update to the software that we're seeing on the printer. Other than that, they appear to be very similar. And I'm not surprised. The next one we're looking at is the anchor or the any cubic. And on this one, you can see it didn't print very well. The shape is there, except for there was a chimney which. Uh, broke off uh, when I tried to take it off the plate. But you can see how poorly this printed. It's just not a nice print. The next one, this is the Overture in Gloss. And it, I find it interesting. Overall, the print's not so bad. There's a little bit of stringing, but we don't have any drooping here or here. There's no drooping in the front, but we did have this defect all the way around. And I've not seen that defect anywhere else, going back to the hatch box. I don't know what's going on with that. I did try reprinting this and the same defect happened again in the same place. But comparing here, it's the same place on there. This print started to look pretty good. Hit that same point and we get this very similar pattern. Um, I don't know what's going on. I tried reprinting them or reprinting the Overture, got the same result. This is the Overture in white matte. And in this one, clearly there's no defect along the z-axis like we saw before. We don't have the drooping in the portal or the door. We don't have the drooping in the front. The chimney is well defined. We don't have the stringing. And between these two, I cannot really tell which one would be gloss and which one's matte without having the sticker on the bottom. So I don't think finish matters at least not for Overture. This is the Sun Lu. It started printing pretty bad, but where we saw the defects on the other one, this one improved in that same approximate Z-axis location. And then we go back to printing poorly. Not really any droop, which is good, but the horizontals are very translucent. There's not a lot of density there. 
I compare it to the hatch box, you can see that how loosely the print here is. Um, but just a bad print. And then we go to inland, and I'm very happy with this inland. I think it actually looks better in the bow than the hatch box. And I think the layering through the cabin is better. You do get stringing, but I can live with stringing if the layers are going to be better. A little bit of uh, not quite filling in right there behind the box, but I think it's okay. The most interesting one was this one. This is the Tech Bears. Get this label off of here. This is the Tech Bears. I did try printing this three times. The result was always the same. Um, this is the full print on this one. It started, and this is the first layer. But somewhere along the first layer, it just didn't get anywhere. And just made this glob of uh, filament. The last one is the Polymaker. This is another one that looks pretty good. Going back to our most recent hatch box, I think it might even be an improvement if you look particularly along here. I think it's better than what we've seen throughout the print on the hatch box. So that was surprising. I really like that. So I found a couple of brands that I would consider the Polymaker, the Hatchbox, and my last choice would be the Overture just because of the consistency between the two different uh, finishes. I would expect that a uh, filament maker would be consistent. And obviously there's some variation. Um, I would not consider the Tech Bears, definitely not. Uh, there's no, I wouldn't even recommend buying it. But the Sun Lu and then any Cubic, I wouldn't bother with either. Not with these types of defects. It reminds me of the Shalu that I printed a couple of weeks ago. Um, and they might come from the same factory. I don't know. Um, but I definitely would not use these again. So that's my experience for this week. Take it or leave it. Uh, this is how my uh, printer printed with these. Obviously, variations in printers will cause different experiences. But I'm not surprised that some of these were so poorly printed. I am surprised that... They had as many reviews as they did on uh, Amazon. So here's what I got on the computer. So as you can tell, they all rated quite high, approximately 4.5 stars. I was surprised, like the Sun Lu, how many reviews it had. I was definitely surprised the Tech Bears, how many reviews it had. Um, I don't know why mine printed so poorly. I'm not surprised that Hatchbox was the highest. It's hard to say what went wrong. I'll keep trying, but uh, it's hard to say. I would go, and my, my preferred brands would be the Polymaker, Inland, and m maybe the Overture, but Hatchbox will be my standard. And then the Sun Lu, Any Cubic, and Tech Bears is what I would stay away from. In the coming weeks, I plan to take the top four or five of these and print a strain dog bone. And then I plan to test those dog bones to see how much weight they can hold. Uh, my daughter, when she was in the sixth grade, ran a similar test using the MakerBot Red PLA, and she printed um, dog bones in 
low quality, medium quality, and high quality settings on a MakerBot she had access to. And then she hung a five gallon bucket from each dog bone and filled the bucket with water until the dog bone broke. At the center of the dog bone, there was a known cross section of one millimeter by one millimeter. And from that, you could calculate the overall failure uh, load and compare it to the specifications from MakerBot. I don't plan to go look up the specifications for each one of these PLAs. I'll use the general PLA specification. But I really want to see if any of these fail well before the others. Ideally, I'm printing them all at the same layer height, so they should be the very, uh, similar density at that one millimeter cross section. And therefore, they should all break at a similar weight. Um, and then I'm going to do a comparison of the failures, and I'll let you know if any fail well before the others or if there's any other outlier uh, characteristics. So that's it for this week. Have a wonderful day. Happy New Year's to everybody. I hope you stay safe.